Welcome back and we're back again with another tutorial and this time we're going to be looking over the server properties through the configuration file for Bedrock. So with that let's open up our internet browser and log on to our Multicraft page. Um, if we back out to the server here, you access it through going to your files, configuration files, and then you come to server settings, whitelisted players or Minecraft EU LA. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be checking out the server settings. Whitelisted players, of course, is the list of players that you have whitelisted if you've got that enabled. So if we go through to the server settings right here, we're going to start with allow fly. And of course, this allows if players will be able to fly or not. You can enable or disable that yourself, depending on how you want the gameplay. Um, allow nether again is enabled or disabled, so you can have the choice to not allow players to uh, go in there or, um, of course, they will be able to. Difficulty, you can choose from um, peaceful, easy, normal and hard. Force game mode, so this is once you have chose your game mode below, this decides whether it is forced upon a player when they log into your server. So if you enable that, if it's survival, they will always be forced into survival mode whenever they log in. If we go one further down, that is the game mode, so this is what you choose. So survival, creative, adventure or spectator. Uh, Spectator won't work on Bedrock, this is only a Java version, so you can do the Survival Creative or Adventure. You can choose whether your world wants uh, gen to generate structures automatically or not, because you might want that disabled if you don't want villagers popping up. If you do, of course, just leave it as enabled, that comes as default. Hardcore mode is disabled and it's not actually a something that you can play on Bedrock, so we'll skip over that one. Hell World again, you can enable or disable that up to your choosing. For the level seed here, if you'd like to choose um, a nice seed that you've maybe found online or somewhere, uh, you just got to type the seed in there, save it and restart the server. Um, on a new world of course if you have already started another world. Level type, this is where you're going to choose what level or world you want it to generate. So you can choose from a standard world, flat world, large biomes, amplified height limit or you can of course customise it. Heal, um, height max build height you can change this here if you want it is set at 256 but you're able to change it through this setting message of the day this is where you can put the little message that pops under your server name when people join um, or a message of the day if you got it coming up on your actual server itself online mode um, is if true all the connected players must be authenticated to Xbox Live again I would suggest keeping this on Player idle time, this is how long a player can sit on your server without getting kicked uh, without and with him uh, not doing anything or moving. If you change this to zero it disables it, however it works in minutes. So 60 is 60 minutes, so if somebody sat there doing nothing for 60 minutes they'll get kicked off the server for being inactive. Player versus player, if that's enabled that means players are able to attack other players and they can cause damage. If it's disabled uh, they won't be able to do that. Spawn animals, if you enable that that of course will make animals spawn on your world you can disable that if you want to um, in case you might be making any sort of mini games or anything like that where you don't need animals spawning and the same with monsters as well you can choose whether they spawn or not so if you enable that they're going to be spawning in your world if you disable it um, then they won't be spawn NPC so non playable characters if you enable that you'll be able to summon them into your world and um, if you don't if you disable it of course then you won't uh, be able to summon them in you just hit disable or enable there We'll skip the texture pack for another video because that's a bit more of a longer explanation and we'll head down to view distance. This is in chunks so if you want to, um, all players to be able to view from 14 chunks away, that's what you'd put. I'd usually leave it depending on your system at maybe 10, 12, it's depending on you. It can, it can go quite high um, if you've got a good system, maybe you can put up to 32 chunks view distance and it will basically load up more of the world that you can see in front of you. However, um, it can take a toll on your game uh, depending how your device runs. Whitelisting, this is if you want to choose players that are able to um, access your server. If they're not whitelisted and you have whitelisting enabled, um, they're not able to access until you add them onto the list yourself. That's simple and easy. I'll just pop it up on the screen now what you've got to do if, you've got to, um, if you want to add or remove players once you've got it whitelisted. OP permission level, this is whether it bypasses the spawn protection, basic cheat commands, um, a player ban kick or, uh, or OP commands, and if they can use the stop command as well. For announced achievements, if you want it enabled, simply keep it enabled. If you don't want um, any achievements popping up, then just disable it. Your server name is pretty self-explanatory. It's what you want your server to be call called and what it it's going to be come up for other people when they search it. And that's going to be uh, this instance server expert. You just call it whatever your, um, your server is. 
allow cheats. Um, again, if you want to allow cheats um, and commands and stuff like that, put that to true. Um, just be careful because um, you can access it if you're an OP. So if you're OP people, they can also access them commands and use them. So only switch it to true if you really need to um, and then switch it to false if you don't need it. Underneath you've got your server port v6 and under that you've got tick distance. This is um, how how stuff will operate in the world, how many chunks away from you it will operate. So in this instance it will um, it will tick for up to four chunks away from you. Max threads is the maximum amount of threads the server tries to use. If set to zero or removed um, then it uses as many as possible. Default permission level, this is quite important. This is when people will join your server, what you want them to be joining in as. Um, and it comes as default as a member. You can, of, of course, switch it to something else. Um, if you want to OP, um, I very much doubt you'd want to put everybody as an operator on there, but you can change that um, as you wish. Texture pack required, this is if you have added a texture pack, whether um, it's a requirement for when new players actually join on to use the same texture packs. The content log file, um, if that's enabled, that enables logging content errors to a file, so you can keep um, you can keep check of them. Compression threshold, again, you really don't have to worry about a lot of these, um, but I'll still go through them anyway. That determines the smallest size of the raw network payload to compress. Uh, for the server authoritative movement, this enables server authoritative movement if um, you've set it to server auth as it is now and it comes as default. Uh, the server will play local user input in the main server, send down corrections just in case um, the players doesn't match up the same um, place where the server is supposed to put in. Player movement score threshold, the number of um, increment time intervals needed before the abnormal behavior is reported. The player movement distance threshold is the difference between a server and the client positions that needs to be exceeded before an abnormal behavior is detected. And the player movement duration threshold in uh, MS or milliseconds is the duration of time the server and client positions can be out of sync as defined by the player movement distance threshold before the abnormal movement score um, is incremented. The value is defined in milliseconds. So this will be stuff like if players are moving too quickly, potentially using any sort of hacks or clients, um, that's how long it will be until it detects it. And correct player movement. If true, the, uh, the client position will get corrected to the server position if the movement score exceeds the threshold. Now that we come to the end of that list, all you've got to do is you have actually made any changes is just hit save. And you'll get taken back to this file here, and as you'll see, config file saved. So that's all saved now. Uh, just before I go to restart the server to make sure it's all properly booted in, um, I'll quickly go over the whitelisted players as well. So if you come on here, you'll see a long line of player names with a few other data values as well, and it goes all the way to the right like that. Um, I'll give you an example here. So ignore player limit. Um, this is false and this is for one of the players so if we wanted to change that to true and in fact if there was a limit of 30 but we wanted um, a particular player to uh, still be able to log on we would just change that true to false and if you have changed anything like that just hit save to back out again you'll see config file saved and what you've got to do then is just head back down to your server although it probably would have loaded up already I always like to be sure and hit that restart button just to make sure everything's properly loaded in for more Seekerhost tutorials, make sure to check out my channel, um, and of course if you want to start up your own server, there will be a link in the description.